Hey everybody, Coach Matt, EliteThrowsCoaching.com. Thank you guys so much for checking out the video analysis today. Again, trying to bang out a few of these right in a row. And I'm really focusing on those videos that have come in that talk about things um, that I am either have already discussed on the YouTube channel so I can link those videos here to teach you even a little bit more about what you need to work on um, or ones that are sort of already shot that are going to be coming up on the YouTube channel within the next couple of days. And this is one that definitely fits uh, that um, What's the word I'm looking for? Kind of fits exactly that thing. So my brain turned off there for a second. I'm not sure what happened, but it fits that category. So there is a video that's going to be coming out at the end of this week, which talks about using the left arm, using the non-throwing arm and what the role of that non-throwing arm is in the rotational shot and in the discus. Now here we have a girl named Lexi. Now, Lexi is going into her senior year. Uh, she says she's been throwing discus for about six years, so she started in middle school. Uh, her PR is 103 feet, 5 inches. She wants to get to 110 before the end of the season. Now, when we take a look at this video, I'm going to show you uh, show, and show Lexi how we can add 10 feet to her throw right this very second. Um, because there's something going on with her non-throwing arm. She's left-handed, so her right arm but it's the same thing if you're a righty or a lefty, your non-throwing arm, um, that's going to get her a lot more power, uh, a lot more force onto her throw. Now, her coach is telling her that she needs a better block uh, to get more height and to get more force on her throw. However, he really hasn't been clear about how to do that. So that's why she reached out to me. Uh, as always, let's take a quick look at this video in uh, kind of real time and see what it looks like. So instantly you see what I'm going to be talking about. Watch that non-throwing arm and how that non-throwing arm kind of has that, it's just, it's always bent. It's always bent, it's always in front of her, and with the coronavirus, this is what I call sneezing into your elbow. So it kind of looks like she's sneezing into her elbow. Her right arm, her non-throwing arm, never really gets used in the throw at all. Um, there's points where that right arm is kind of slowing her down where she could be using that right arm to speed her throw up and where she could be using that right arm to put a lot more force and a lot more whip into this throw. All right, so let's go through it here. Let's start at the very beginning and let's take a look. So we already know, we can see it in the video, the right arm. So right here in the back of the circle, this is where she starts to bend that arm and sneeze into her elbow. So you want to keep this non-throwing arm super, 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 super long. You want to use every single inch of this lever that is coming off of your shoulder. You want that arm to be super long. And the goal in the back of the circle, what I look for with my throwers, is that when they get to this position right here, where the shoulders are square, I would love to see this arm all the way out. So we want to use this non-throwing arm. Extend that left arm or that non-throwing arm for righties, it's left arm, but again here for Lexi, it's her right arm. Extend that right arm as far as possible. What's that going to do? Well, the first thing it's going to do is it's going to get more weight over her right foot. So imagine if her hand was out here where the cursor is right now on your screen. That's even more weight that's going to help her get more weight on her right foot. It's going to help her get her sternum and her head over her right foot and her right knee and get her to move through the circle faster and more efficiently. So that long right arm. Now you can see she's not really doing a great job of getting her head and sternum over her foot. If you were to draw a line straight up here, that we got about six, eight inches we got to come over. So more weight is going to help her get more on her right foot. So if we get more weight, just that arm, if we extend the arm like we're trying to scrape the discus cage, if we extend that arm, if we really try to reach with this right arm, we're going to have more weight over her right foot. 
we're going to be able to get her left foot off the circle earlier and we're going to make a more efficient and faster turn through the middle. As we go through the middle, you can see she does a great job driving through the circle, but notice that right arm. The right arm, the elbow's already behind her back right here. Okay, so she kind of looks like that meme. I wish I was better at editing, but we've all seen it where it's three pictures where the person is running in one direction with both of their arms behind their back. And then they're running back the opposite direction with both of their arms kind of flapping behind their back. And then they're running the other direction with both of their arms flapping behind their back. That's what it looks like right here. So we've got the left elbow is back behind the body where it should be. But the right elbow is also back behind the body. I want this right arm super, super long. So at this point, that right arm should be pointing, if this is a clock, and over here was like 7 o'clock, you got 6, 7, 8, 9. Her arm should be pointing kind of towards 7 o'clock, but her arm is pointing, her elbow is pointing all the way back here toward like 10 o'clock. So we've got to add uh, or take away some of this like stretching, rowing, pulling back of that right arm. See how it's behind her, and then that right arm right here stops. Not only does it stop, it goes in the opposite direction. So we're whipping that arm around. So at this point, it's going clockwise because she's a lefty. That right elbow is coming around clockwise, clockwise, clockwise. See how it's coming around? Clockwise. Here it comes. Still moving clockwise. Still moving clockwise. Still moving. Still moving. And now it's going counterclockwise. It starts to move in the opposite direction. See that? So that's stopping her. That's actually slowing her down. She's resisting. Her body's trying to go clockwise. Her body is turning clockwise. But her right arm is now moving counterclockwise. So see that? She actually stops herself. She slows herself down by trying to wrap her arm and kind of sneeze into her elbow. Do you see that? Where if she had that arm long, it would have just accelerated and really sped up her throw. And then when we get here, again, we want that nice long arm. So we want this right arm reaching all the way back here for 12 o'clock. But again, it's, it's short. And if it's short, it's not going to have as much force or as much power. Um, you know, think of it like, the, you know, like a little kid playing with their fork or their spoon at the table. You know, if they put like a kernel of corn on one end of the spoon and then they slam down on the spoon, that kernel of corn, like a catapult, is going to go flying across the table. Well, now imagine instead of it being like a little teaspoon, now imagine it's like a big old serving spoon. Now you've got a big old serving spoon with a much longer handle. And you take that same kernel of corn and put it on one end of that spoon on the handle and you slam down on the spoon. Well, now it's a bigger spoon. It's a longer handle. It's the same size kernel of corn and you're going to put the same amount of force down into that spoon. It's going to go a heck of a lot longer. Because again, we've got a longer lever and it's the same thing here. We've got a short little lever. So at this point, instead of having her arm all the way back pointing toward 12 o'clock, we've got a short little elbow. And that short little elbow is like that tiny little spoon. This, is, this would be a beautiful position if that arm was out. Imagine that. Imagine how if that arm was super long, how much more force, how much more whip we'd get into that throw. So Lexi's got to really do a better job here. And it's a great looking throw, but look at that right arm. Look at how short it is. Get that right arm out even more, and it's going to be even more whip. See, right now your block is kind of non-existent with your upper body. You do a fantastic job. I mean, it needs a little work, but you do a great job of, look at getting your right heel down and initiating that block. We got to do it a little bit earlier. We got to do it right about here instead of there. But get the right heel down earlier. 
bang. Now your entire right side has stopped. So that's the first part of the block. The second part of the block is with the upper body's right side. And see how it's just, there's no power. It's just kind of like, eh. You know, imagine like a car accident. Imagine crashing into a wall doing two miles an hour. Everybody in the car is going to go, eh. Now imagine crashing into the wall doing 100 miles an hour. Okay, remember those crash test dummy commercials from back in the day? Boom, those crash test dummies, the discus, those crash test dummies are going to go flying through the front windshield. That Kleenex box on the back window is going to become a deadly projectile flying through the air. The Kleenex box might go through the front window. It's got so much speed behind it. Okay? We need more speed. We need more power. We need more whip with this right arm. And that super fast whip getting pulled back into this position and stopping right here, that's that car doing 100 miles an hour going into the wall. Right here, we've got the car going like two miles an hour into the wall. Just a little, eh. Imagine that long right arm, that long right arm whipping around up in the air to get a little bit of a higher release angle. Long right arm whipping in the air. And then, boom, nice and short. Long to short. Okay, I don't think your release angle is really that bad. But the right arm being short and dropping down by your side just really is not allowing you to transfer any amount of force into that throw. It's short, like throwing a punch. Imagine if somebody was behind you right now. You're walking down the street and somebody runs up behind you and grabs you around the neck and tries to steal your purse or tries to steal your wallet. Okay, they got you in a chokehold. Are you going to do this with your right elbow? Are you going to go, eh, 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 and try to elbow him in the stomach to get away? Absolutely not. That right arm is going to go super long. And then, boom, you're going to elbow that guy as hard as possible in the stomach. Try to break his ribs. Whip that right arm around forcefully and elbow that person right in the stomach. You're trying to hurt them. You're trying to break their ribs, knock the wind right out of them, try to get them off of you. So we want a big explosive, boom, long right arm, big explosive long right arm into that shorter elbow. That is going to conserve momentum, law of conservation of momentum. Believe me, I'm not a physics major, but that's the one thing I do remember from high school physics as a thrower is all of the momentum that you are creating in the circle needs to stop boom as hard as possible so that that will transfer into the discus right here you've got a good block with that left heel being down you got the right idea with that right elbow coming around but it's going to be a long right arm a long sweeping fast snappy whippy right arm that snaps around boom into that short elbow instead of a short bent sneezing into your elbow position it's not really going to be a lot of force getting delivered into that throw so the video for this is going to drop in about two days i just shot it last night i still have to edit it and it's going to be talking about the roll of the left arm or the roll of the non-throwing arm in the discus and the rotational shot. It should be out on Friday, um, but I will link all of that here that's going to explain exactly what the left arm does, exactly how the left arm kind of creates more leverage and shifts more weight out of the back and how that long non-throwing arm contributes to a big explosive block at the end of the throw. So that's what I got for you, Lexi. You change that. You've got 10 feet on your throw instantly. You've got 10 feet on your throw this afternoon at practice, okay? But keep working on it. Keep working on that long right arm. Using that long right arm throughout your entire throw 
And then when the new video uh, drops on Friday, I will link all of that here as pop-ups. Um, until then, make sure, guys, to subscribe to the channel. Uh, make sure to um, check out all the links below. Check out the camps that we're doing this summer. Check out the one-day camps in West Virginia in a couple weeks. Um, lots and lots and lots of opportunities. I'm doing a lot of traveling over the next couple of months. Lots of opportunities for you guys to get some good quality coaching if you're not getting it at your schools uh, and throw some more PRs and have a great spring season. So check everything out down below. Make sure to subscribe to the channel and click that notification bell so you, you get all of the notifications of when I put out a new video. And if there's anything else, guys, please leave it in the comment section right down below.